I wish I could make reaction videos, but I was born in 1956. I've heard all these songs. What could I possibly react to? Hey whippersnappers, Brian here at a Boomer Reacts. Welcome back. If this is your first time here, thanks for checking me out. On this channel, I listen to rap and hip hop songs and give you my reaction. And I use uh, lyric videos to do so, um, mostly because um, I want to understand what the lyrics are. And uh, I know myself well enough, I would be too distracted by the official video to uh, focus on the lyrics. Um, Today, however, I'm not doing a lyric video. I'm doing, by popular demand, um, an interview with Tupac, Ed Gordon's 1994 interview. I was kind of hesitant to um, do uh, react to an interview. Uh, one, I thought it would be boring for you. Um, the the interview is like 25 minutes long. I suppose it's possible I'll break them up into two. Um, well, as you're watching right now, you'll know whether I did or not because uh, you'll either be watching, you know, part one or, you know, I did the whole thing in one fell swoop. Um, and the other reason is, um, the other reason I was hesitant is, um, I'm imagining Pac is going to be talking about stuff that is, uh, uh, N not of my universe. Um, uh, so I'm going to be ignorant about a lot of stuff. And, uh, you know, ignorant doesn't mean stupid. Ignorant just means, you know, you don't have knowledge of something. Um, and uh, I I'm sure Pac is going to be talking about uh, injustice and uh, police profiling and... Uh, um, violence and drugs perhaps and um you know i i was uh born and raised in the suburbs um i don't know that i've even walked down a sketchy street uh much less than in a ghetto um <clears throat> so uh forgive my uh ignorance if i say something that i don't know what i'm talking about but that's the beauty of me doing this reaction you know, so you guys can see, you know, the good and the bad. Well, if it's too bad, yeah, you won't be seeing this because <laughs> I'll trash it and never post it. So if you're watching this, I guess that means it went okay. Okay, uh, if you know me, you know, uh, I, I like context. I like to know when I react to a song, when it was recorded, when it was released, all that stuff. Um, and this is no different. Uh, so I found out it was, um, the interview took place October 15th, 1994 in Atlanta. <clears throat> so October means his, his trial hasn't started yet. And someone rightfully in the comments told me, stop calling it the rape trial because he was never accused of rape. Um, so point taken, very true. Um, and so I was thinking, well, maybe I'll call it the abuse trial and I'm just going to call it the sham trial because I think it's a piece of shit. So, uh, so this is before the sham trial, um, and I guess, uh, I guess probably, um, me against the world's probably, you know, in the can, as they say, because this is October, so I'm assuming he's done with, um, done recording, uh, all those songs and, you know, it's, uh, you know, being prepped for release. And, uh, you know, I'm very interested in this period uh, in between, um, you know, the, the sham accusation and the sham trial, um, you know, because what immense pressure he was under, um, you know, to, to write and record um, Me Against the World. And, you know, this interview is right in there, too. So uh, knowing his frame of mind uh, gives me a better... Um, idea of uh, where this might head. Well, not where it might head, but um, at least um, it, w it will inform me about his answers. Let's put it that way. Okay, so Ed Gordon from BET is doing the interview. The business that hasn't been shown before. You know, I have a whole energy 
that represents not just black youth, but white youth, Mexican youth, youth, you know what I'm saying? That, that, um, that change right before you go from being 18 and unresponsible to when you go to being like 21, 22, and the whole world's on your shoulders. Um, I, I believe strongly that um, my audience empathize with me because I show that side, I show that emotion raw, uncut, good and bad. And so I think I can bring that um, more funnel, more um, directed into screenplays, more albums, producing, managing, you know what I'm saying? If I can um, figure out just how to control it, I can, uh, I can use it on a lot of different levels. I it's already sad, you know, look how excited he is about, uh, um, you know, the, the, the vistas that he can, you know, uh, conquer. Um, and this is what, uh, not even two years before he dies. Um, so it's already sad. And is, uh, is this where that, I, I'm assuming this is where the interview starts. Cause I mean, it's not, it seems like it, we came into it after, you know, the interview had already started. So, um, I hope this is the right video I'm reacting to. Trip off because it happens out of nothing. It just goes, you know, everybody just be screaming and acting. And I just, I, I get uncomfortable and I, it's like, it's like, um, similar to a deer being caught in the, in the headlights. I just freeze, you know, and I don't know what to do. I don't know if I should, um, be what they want me to be or if I should make them hate me so they can stop, you know, like say something mean so they can just stop. But I, I'm often, I'm just like caught in the middle of it because it's, it's you can't, it's, I mean, no one can do that. Police can't do that. They can't stand in front of all those people and control them with a gun and mace and all that. So me with just words, it's like a, um, a battle to find the right words to say at the right time. Um, and he's 23 in this, and, you know, what an awesome responsibility he acknowledges that he has. When I was 23, I wouldn't even be able to sit down for this interview. I'd be so nervous, much less be so eloquent. It's a... Uh, it's amazing kind of I'm curious when you when you think about the idea that you do have that kind of control over so many people uh, in, in one sense the whole idea of being a role model comes up in the imagery and a lot of people who know you and I talked to them beforehand suggested that hey you know when you meet him he's gonna be something entirely different than you imagine hmm. and what the media is portraying him what about that idea that that you have been portrayed and sometimes I mean to be honest you like the portrayal of mm -hmm. you just hard that's thug, right. that's right don't step on me that's right you're in trouble that's right yet there's another side to you too mm -hmm. what about that idea that you've got to be able to figure out where you're going um. <laughs> those of you who have been watching <laughs> watching my uh, my POC reactions know that I question this all the time like how can the same person do um you know dear mama and and hit him up um and you know here's here's ed askin let's see what puck says step on me that's right you're in trouble that's right yet there's another side to you too what about that idea that you've got to be able to figure out where you're going um to me it's like um it is my sensitive side that um that likes to blow up the hard side because if my if I can if my image or my reputation can stop a confrontation before it happens I'm I'm, I'm fine you know what I'm saying I know how it is day to day it's a constant um, man ego check going on in this street in this world so part of that is just like you know that's my that's my my resume but as far as the media they look at it as something different. They don't care about my resume. They don't care about me not getting in trouble. It's just another story, you know, and it's, it's a real story. They don't have to pay for it, and they're going to milk it for all it's worth. As far as people, they want me, when they first see me, to humble myself. They want me to be like this and da-da-da just because they're scared of me. But I don't feel like that's my job, to humble myself, to show you that I'm not a threat. I'm not a threat unless you're a threat to me. You know what I'm saying? So when people say, when you meet Pop, he's different than he is because when somebody one-on-one, -on -one, anybody one-on-one, -on -one, I believe, honestly, that I can talk. I believe that I have the ability to reason. I have logic. I have compassion. I have understanding. If we talk, there's no problems. You know what I'm saying? But that's not what happens. People use what they heard in the media, and that's how they come at me. And then, you know, we got to clash. One of the things... Um, that's very interesting. Um, and, you know, t to have to uh, go from 
This is 94, and he came on the scene in, what, 90, 91, 92? Um, you know, uh, in that small time frame, at his young age, uh, to have this fame thrust upon him, uh, I, 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 don't, I can't even understand how someone handles that. That's just got to be such a mind fuck. That you read in the media is that you're angry, that you personify your generation, that you just got some angry folks out there and you're one of them. I'll put it to you. Are you angry? Are you angry with what you see society is about? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm extremely angry, confused. You know, um, a lot of the times that I sat up in court, I couldn't defend myself. You know what I'm saying? And it was it wasn't like the things they were saying about me were beyond my comprehension. Uh, this is October, and the trial didn't start till November, so have I got something screwed up? Oh, um, he did, um, when was that, uh, Menace to Society thing? I'm sure he had to go to trial for that. That was this year, right? He, like, uh, attacked the director of Menace to Society, and he had a little short, you know, jail term, like a couple of weeks. So I'm sure he had to go to trial for that. That's maybe what this is. I'll put it to you. Are you angry? Are you angry with what you see society is about? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm extremely angry, confused. You know, um, a lot of the times that I sat up in court, I couldn't defend myself, you know what I'm saying? And it, was, it wasn't like the things they were saying about me were beyond my comprehension or um, the things that I could say weren't going to help my case, but because I mean, I was—it's like being exiled, you know, from from society, and that's how I feel. And this whole um, the anger comes from—I'm tired of waiting for my past to get into society. All I ever wanted to do was make um, me and everybody around me feel more comfortable about where we were. You know what I'm saying about the places that we stay, where we—this is our home base. Let's build it up. Let's be happy about where we come from. You know what I'm saying? Instead of trying to assimilate and um, get a pass key to where they at. You know what I'm saying? Not to say that everything needs to be separate, but we gotta find pride in ourselves. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and once you get the pride, like damn near two seconds after the pride comes anger from being held like that for so long, and to be made to go through those changes, you get mad. You know. What I'm saying? Um, so th this is, um, a, a, and I d totally understand what he's saying, totally empathetic to it, but, you know, I did not grow up like this. I did not live this life. So, you know, for for me to process it and be just as angry as Pac is, that's difficult. Um, uh, but I realize I, I can see the anger in him. I see the cause of the anger in him. Uh, but. For me, be, for me to be able to feel that anger, um, that's, it's just not possible. But understand that I'm empathetic towards it and I understand why he is. Saying as soon as, I believe as soon as any black man receives his first three checks, he starts getting mad. Because it's not about the necessity of having to have a job and having to pay and having to do that. You don't care no more about the smiles and the, you know, yes, my son, because you done got paid. You know what I'm saying? And now it's like you want to save money. You want to help other people. And you see how, how far it is, how far you have to go to help anybody in your neighborhood. It's set up for me when I get paid for me to exit the ghetto. You know what I'm saying? The only reason I've had these problems is because I haven't left yet. And these problems don't come from a white man. It comes from just society, the problems that we have. Let me put this to you. A lot of people tell me. Tupac is, for the most part, a nice guy. This old thug thing, hype. Hmm. Good for record sales. Mm -hmm. uh, helps him identify with the young people who are out there and angry, who would maybe label him a sellout like they did Hammer if he mm -hmm. didn't have that hard mm -hmm. side. Um, uh, that's something that I've accused Suge of, is um, you know, uh, ginning up this, uh, this rivalry uh, you know, to make some money. Um, uh, and it's, it's uh, very much, you know, I did the East Coast, West Coast rivalry series. And uh, in one of the earlier episodes, I was doing Tim Dog, um, you know, who kind of started everything by uh, releasing Fuck Compton after uh, NWA came out. Um, and there's a story of him uh, uh, running into... Um, Compton's most wanted at a party and he was saying to them 
tell all your friends to diss me back um, because, you know, that's that's what the people want to hear. That's money. Bring it on and I'll diss him back and you diss me again. And I, you know, uh, I guess he was thinking that was, you know, a way to uh, keep everyone uh, rel relevant. So um, I've heard that before. Um, and I do believe it about Shug. Identify with the young people who are out there and angry who would maybe label him a sellout like they did Hammer if he didn't mm -hmm. have that hard mm -hmm. side. What about that? First of all, nobody could call me a sellout. I'm not, I'm not going for that. I'm not even in that. I'm not, I'm not looking for approval from the black community because we don't give approval. You know, we don't really do nothing but exist. So it's not like I'm, black people could tell me, you a sellout or you true blue. You know what I'm saying? It's not that. I'm not even caught up in that. But um, I can see that, you know what I'm saying, the one thing we do have in common as black people is we share that poverty. So the thug side is more closer to the poverty than me being rich. You know, how can I come to any community center, you know what I'm saying, sporting a, a Rolex, presidential, all these diamonds, and be like, look, we, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> gotta, gotta. <laughs> but now when I say we, they know what I mean. I'm not saying like I live in this neighborhood and nothing, but I'm a thug and they thugs. They can relate to it. I don't even have to say that. You know what I'm saying? When I come, I don't have to say I'm real. They already know that. You know what I'm saying? From, from me, from me being me. From not pushing the thugness, but I know from the business that everybody in this business is always whispering in your ear about what you can't say, what you can't do, what you can't wear in this world and in this world. It's two worlds, a white world and a black world. All I did was stand in the middle. You know what I'm saying, and, and say I'm, I'm living in these, but I'm living in both worlds. I, I can go to the streets and survive, and I can go out here and do my business out here. I'm play devil's advocate again. All right. Critics say, yeah, but you're being pimped. You're being pimped by the record record executives, who will allow you to do your thug life because it portrays a certain black. I mean, you've heard it yeah. that if you were just a singer, you wouldn't have the same record contracts you have. Right. But because you portray the thug life, the gangster rap, they've allowed you to make that money. They've allowed you to push and make you platinum. I bet. Everybody's being pimped. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting pimped. That's true. But um, just like how a, how a woman would be, you know what I'm saying? Anybody would be pimped. You know, it's like, it's not that you get pimped. It's how long you get pimped. You know what I'm saying? Because if you really look at this situation, it is not I who's being pimped. When you look at them white kids with Raiders hats on, it's the white folks getting pimped. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm, I'm making their future. I'm writing down their curriculum. Right now, what I write in my album today, when it comes out in two months, that's what white kids is doing. Snap. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm, I'm making their future. I'm writing down their curriculum. Right now, what I write in my album today, when it comes out in two months, that's what white kids is doing. So who really is getting pimped? I'll be, I'll be, I'll, what I'm writing in my raps is what them white kids is going to be saying to their mamas and daddies when they come home. Who is getting pimped? You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm a high school dropout. You know what I'm saying? As far as my teacher told me when I was in high school, I ain't going to be You know what I'm saying? I just got to, it's going down. You know what I'm saying? It's going down. <laughs> you know, everybody's getting pimped. Whether you work a nine to five or whether you work for yourself, you're getting pimped by somebody. That's not the, that's not the crime. Everybody. The crime is how long you allow yourself to get pimped. You have to come up. Everything is a come up. Everything is a struggle. You start from the bottom, work it to the top. The press and the media make you think that a black man arming himself is illegal or criminal or that he wants to arm himself to rob a liquor store or something. You know what I'm saying? That is for me to defend myself, and it should always be. It's just about surviving, you know, and we have to be honest about the tools that we use to survive. And why is a black life um, any, any more recoupable than a white life? You know what I'm saying? We know that they don't put the same security in the ghetto that they do in the, whites, in, the, in, in the white neighborhood. So therefore, for me to be out here saying, don't, you know, put your guns down and no violence, that's hypocritical. And if I didn't talk about the violence, everybody would act like the violence wasn't there. We, as rappers, bought that violence. We, we bought the, the violence that we've seen on the street. We put in our records, put in our records for years. And after three, four years, people first, finally starting to see it because of all the statistics that's going on in the streets. If we stopped talking about it, then they wouldn't take statistics. And when they stopped taking statistics, then we'd be wow. killing each other in the street, and these white people wouldn't care no more. Only people they, only reason they care is because, you know, there's been some strays, and we just slipped over in the white neighborhoods. And there's kids in Iowa that want to be like us. You know what I'm saying? There's kids Makes in sense. Indiana that's trying to be like us because they can relate to you know what I'm saying you even admit it I don't live in that neighborhood anymore 
there's no real reason for you to carry a nine millimeter. Don't believe that. Why? <laughs> in, in two years, I've had a gun pulled on me by my limo driver, by police, by everybody. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's going to happen in six weeks. To carry a nine millimeter. Don't believe that. Why? In, in two years, I've had a gun pulled on me by my limo driver, by police, by everybody. You know what I'm saying? And I better be. I better be. You know what I'm saying? I've been attacked. You ain't read the papers about these skinheads trying to blow up black churches. Why? They see me as the enemy just like y'all do. You know what I'm saying? They can come to my house and sit outside <laughs> my house just like anybody else can. A skinhead. And once my life is gone, it's gone. Can't nobody give it back to me. Not the judge, not the president, not the governor, not Calvin Butts, not Jesse Jackson. They can't do nothing but come to my funeral and talk pretty about how black people suffer. You understand? And as far as Jesse... Wow. Um, that's, um, that's them tough words. Um, I think he had an issue with Jesse Jackson at one point, right? Like uh, uh, Jesse was down on gangster rap or something. Not the judge, not the president, not the governor, not Calvin Butts, not Jesse Jackson. They can't do nothing but come to my funeral and talk pretty about how black people suffer. You understand? And as far as Jesse Jackson, my first acting job was at the Apollo Theater when Jesse Jackson was running for president in 1984. It hurts me for him to say anything negative about any rapper because we supported him. He should support us. You know what I'm saying? As far as his image, you know what I'm saying? What was he? What was he doing? You know, he should be the last person talking about gun violence when he sat right there while Martin Luther King caught one in the neck. You know what I'm saying? D d things ain't really changed that much. I swear wow. to God. Nothing I ever say is meant to be um, something where innocent people get hurt. Nothing I ever say is meant to be like a end all, let's go do it right now. Nothing. Everything I ever say, and if, if, if any, this is so we can set it clear, anything I ever say as it pertains to, um, to, to my peers and, and, and um, being strapped is only in self-defense. You know what I'm saying? Because my, right now where I'm at, the world is harsh. And I just don't got no beautiful stories. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to just be getting them ready. Because that's why I think I messed up. If somebody would have grabbed me, pulled me to the side and been like, look, Tupac, as soon as you step out here, they're going to be at you. If somebody would have explained it to me, I wouldn't have took the same mistakes. But I made those mistakes. And that was my job to stop somebody else from making those same mistakes. To lay it out. To lay out the real map on the world and how it is. Everything I'm saying is a warning, is, 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 is a plea for help. If everybody was so goddamn worried about me, why ain't nobody came to help me? You know what I'm saying? I never wanted to be no star. This ain't my job. I don't care if everybody don't cheer for me. You know what I'm saying? If you're not cheering for me for what I'm doing, don't cheer for me. Don't cheer because you think I'm cute. You know what I'm saying? Screw that. Cheer for me for what I'm doing, for what I stand for. And when I go to jail, you should cheer louder. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm, I'm standing up for what I do. I'm not robbing nobody, not stealing from nobody. I never took nothing. Everything I do, I do to represent my people. I do because I think this is what they want me to do. Um, you know, uh, this is so refreshing. Rarely do you see um, a, a celebrity um, not not filter themselves, you know, when a celebrity is being interviewed, you know, it, uh, their responses are very measured, like, you know, I don't want to offend anyone if, you know, I really tell the truth, um, you know, so, uh, you know, a, a little fudge here and, you know, a little white lie here, but you can tell the way he's walking, uh, talking, that it's just coming right from his brain to his mouth and there's no filter here. You can tell. This is all I want to say. For all the people that doubt me, I had no record all my life, okay? No record, no police record, until I made a record. As my video was debuting <laughs> on MTV, I was behind bars getting beat up by the police department. I got a $10 million lawsuit. They, they said they were settling with me and everything. You know what I'm saying? But nobody cared about that. That wasn't blew up all in the news. In they Oakland. didn't see me. They did not see me on TV with my eye busted, my head busted. There's pictures of those. In Oakland, you don't, you're yes, about. in Oakland. You don't see them pictures. You see pictures of Tupac coming out of jail and cuffs. You don't see pictures of the police standing over me beating my brains in. You don't see that. But I see that. That's what I see. You know what I'm saying? So it's all real. And, and I, I feel like just like a woman that's raped, any woman that's raped would never, ever allow herself to be raped again. Am I correct? Any woman that's violated would never allow herself to be violated again. Same thing. You know there are going to be people who sit here and say, how can you say that when you're faced with that charge? That's in how New I can York. say it. We got people in my own community that will get me. Why? Because I got it. 
Now this girl, who I can't say her name, but if I was to say her name, a thousand all over the world would go. Ayanna Jackson, um, if you haven't watched um, uh, Vlad TV, his interview with her, you should watch that um, because she is uh, so not believable. It's it's amazing that anyone took her word for what happened. It it breaks my heart for him that you know just because she was a woman, I guess, young woman. That uh, she was to be believed. I also read an article. And I forget what it was from. It was when I doing when I was doing East Coast West Coast. It was kind of like a, one of the jurors from this uh, sham trial um, was speaking out, and I think he said something like, "There was a couple of you know light ladies who were um, on the jury, and they just would not budge an inch, of, you know, about some of the stuff." Um, I mean, because I think the majority of the of the jury were just like, uh, yeah, we don't believe any of this. But uh, there was a couple of white women who were were uh, bound and determined that Pac would get, you know, some time. Um, I think uh, the the juror was quoted as saying that one of these ladies said something like, "He has thug life tattooed on his abdomen. You're going to let him just walk out onto the street." Everything I love. When I was in Atlanta, I was pulled over the gas station. Some dudes from New York pulled over next to me and told me the girl's name. I said, they said, I know the girl that did it. They told me her name and where she's from. Say she's scandalous. I can't go on TV talking about this girl, because that's what they want me to do. They want me to get on TV and talk about my black sister as a hoe and she's a B I T C H and she ain't. She a money grubber. I ain't fit to say that. I don't have to do that to show that I'm innocent. You know what I'm saying? I'm not guilty. People should look me in my eyes. They should look me in my eyes. And anybody that thinks I committed that rape should go get Brenda's got a baby and keep your head up and listen to him thoroughly. It was hard to imagine that it she shouldn't would be, do that. It shouldn't be nothing for, it should not even be to me. I have no um, patience for anybody that doubts me. None. At all. It's too hard out here. You know what I'm saying? If my people don't stand up for me, who is? I understand these white folks looking at me like that because they don't know me. They didn't hear keep your head up. That ain't no fluke. You know, keep your head up ain't no goddamn uh, come up. I didn't do that for me to be smiling in my face to say, oh, he's cool. I did that from my heart. So that if they do try to put a rape charge on me, my sisters could say he ain't out there. Now, if my sisters can't say that, you won't hear another keep your head up out my mouth. You understand me? Uh, uh, I recognize that that last uh, paragraph that he said uh, because I um, I used it I think it was in my my reaction to keep your head up I used that part where he said you know uh, 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 whoever doubts me you know go listen to uh, Brenda's got a baby and keep your head up uh, and um, you know if, if my if my sisters um, don't say that's not the way he is um, then he, then he was never gonna, you know, motherfucking sing, keep your head up again. My heart, so that if they do try to put a rape charge on me, my sisters could say he ain't out there. Now, if my sisters can't say that, you won't hear another keep your head up out my mouth. You understand me? Because it's a struggle on young black males today. What would a Vietnam vet be like without a sergeant, without any backup, without any other soldiers, nobody but a Vietnam vet in Vietnam, when he came home, how would he be? And that's me. I had to go through all that street war, everything, the same drugs that everybody else get turned out on. You know, where I would have been stopped short, I made it pass. And here's where I am. But because I made it pass, I missed some lessons. You know what I'm saying? And you can see the lessons that I miss when you talk to me. You can see where, where I haven't had a father when you talk to me. You know what I'm saying? You can see where I spent a lot of my time in the streets when you talk to me. Because the words that I say are not words that come from a mother's mouth or a father's mouth. It's words that come from a pimp's mouth or a prostitute or a hustler or a drug dealer. You know what I'm saying? But to me, these were my role models. How much of that, though, in terms of growing up without a father, sometimes not being with your mother, do you, do you lament on and look back and say, damn, I, I missed something big? Everything. I, um, I know for mm -hmm. a fact that had I had a father, had I had someone, that, and I hate saying this because white people love hearing black people talk about this, but had I had a father, had I had somebody. Um, white people love to talk. So I guess he's saying, um, you know, he's generalizing that uh, white people 
uh, love to hear stories about um, uh, black men uh, shirking their responsibilities um, of fatherhood, you know, uh, uh, abandoning, you know, not paying. Um, and he's saying that, uh, you know, uh, white people love to hear that because it, uh, you know, reinforces that stereotype. And, you know, I, I personally don't, don't have that thought, but I, I'm, I'm sure people do. I, um, I know for a fact that had I had a father, had I had someone, and I hate saying this because white people love hearing black people talk about this, but had I had a father, had I had some of these opportunities, I'd have been able to help my mother more. She wouldn't have went the road she went. I could have been a better son. You know what I'm saying? She wouldn't have went that road. It was the absence of my father. You know what I'm saying? I'm dealing with him being daddy not being there. My mother's dealing with him being my man not being there. You know, so many problems in our community that, that um, affect everything. So by me not having that, I ain't never want to hear nothing about no kind of relationships between a black man and a black woman. I knew they didn't work. Because as far as I knew, my daddy was the coolest dude out there. And my mama was a panther. So if they didn't work, it don't work. That's how I felt. You know what I'm saying? And going out there, you know what I'm saying? It's like watching my mother just go through changes and everything. It's like my mother's my partner. She's a soldier. You know, she's a soldier like I'm a soldier. You know, and I, I watched the, the peep the game that she went through. If I, I would have went the same way my mother went had not she did her route and showed me which, where it went wrong with her. My mother always told me, don't you ever, ever just um, volunteer yourself to our people because they'll use you. That's what they do. You know what I'm saying? She, never, she also told me to uh, follow my heart and for me to be the leader. But it's interesting to see just the change in your face, your reaction, your, your, your thought process. That's all I ever wanted to do, ask my mama. I wanted to go to college. I went to school all the way and was ready to go to college. The only thing that stopped me was money. The time we all of my all the kids in my school was writing applications to go to college, I didn't have no lights and no electricity. And that ain't my mama's fault. You know what I'm saying? So when I think back to that, I'm not thugging for me. I'm thugging for my family. I pay all the bills. You know what I'm saying? I, I feed my whole family, wrong or right, I do. And I can't stop. You know what I'm saying? If thugging is gonna make me a million bucks, cause it just got me platinum, then that's what I got to do constantly. And if it makes me feel, cause right now, I feel satisfied. I don't feel like I've ever embarrassed myself or my people, you know, and nothing that I've done. And yet and all, I got the whole world fear me. You know what I'm saying? At 23. Weighing 160 pounds, you know what I'm saying? And I ain't even started. I haven't even rolled my plan out yet, and they scared. I got the vice president know who I am, the president, every cop in every city, you know what I'm saying? And I haven't even started working out a plan. We killing each other because we killing ourselves. We not, when a man, when another man, I know, I've been in a position, it don't, it's, not, it's out of our control. It's not like he wants to kill. He just doesn't want to die. You know what I'm saying? It's that, it's that situation when you got, we, we are living in a war zone. It's not as easy as these people are making us think that they just got some criminal ass black kids with guns. It is not like that. We live in hell. We live in the gutter. We got us stacked up 80 deep in one building. You know, by the time you get out your house, you strapped to protect yourself. Because you're living in the same community that the police is carrying rifles and riot gear. Same, they need them riot, riot excuse my language, I'm so sorry. The same reasons. I, I noticed a couple of times that he uh checked himself when he was gonna swear so i'm assuming that um you know uh ed probably said you know uh try not to use profanity but you know when when you speak that way um you know it's it's hard especially him he doesn't filter himself so it's hard for him to um you know uh be be aware that um you know a word is coming up because it just comes out like i said there's no filter so it just comes out. So um, I hope Ed is not disappointed because um, even if I had told Pac that, I would assume that he was he was just going to swear because it comes so second nature to him. So I kind of feel bad for Pac that he was obviously given that rule, you know, to try not to swear. But, you know, it's not swearing for most of us, you know. F-U-C-K, it's a word, it's four letters, you know? It's, it's, it's the power that you, hearing it, what you give it, it's just a word. Don't give it any power. It seems so easy to me.
They need the riot hat, the riot jacket, the flak jacket, the double vest, the nine millimeter Glocks with extra bullets, the tear gas, the mace, all that. Who do you think the police is using that against? Dogs? <laughs> so we fighting the same villains that they fight in the street. But instead of them seeing us fighting villains in the street, we all villains. Is your generation the one that is picked? Wow. That's, that's deep. Yeah, that's true, right? You know, the... Uh, the police go into the street and there's, you know, so there's some legit, you know, uh, gangsters out there, um, you know, who, who, you know, will just do anything. Um, and then you've got, uh, you've got uh, everybody else who needs to protect themselves from those guys. But when the police come in, all they see is, you know, you know, thugs. I never even thought about it like that. So we fighting the same villains that they fight in the street. But instead of them seeing us fighting villains in the street, we all villains. Is your generation the one that is picking up for where the Panthers left off saying, all right, enough is enough. The generation before us forgot about the fight. We're picking it back up. Not only forgot about the fight, forgot about us. Yes, and we're picking it back up. But at this level, all we're trying to do is unite. And right now, as a year, we got a million people that's listening. Now we can tell them something. Now we can try to get them that way, and we might lose some. We might gain some, but we would never even have that audience had we not said what was real. You know what I'm saying? And the main thing for us to remember is that the same crime element that white people are scared of, black people are scared of. The same crime element that white people fear, we fear. So we defend ourselves from the same crime element that they scared of. You know what I'm saying? While they waiting for, to, for legislation to pass and everything, we next door to the killer. We next door to them, you know, because we up in the projects where it's 80 in the building. All them killers that they letting out, they right there in that building. But it's better just because we black, we get along with the killers or something. We get along with the rapists because we black and we from the same hood. What is That's, you know, <laughs> that's, um, you know, mind blowing, too that I, I never thought of that. You know, in, in a white neighborhood, you know, they have those, um, you know, sex offender registers, you know, and you can go online and see where they live in your neighborhood. You know, can you imagine having something like that for uh, convicted killers and rapists and, and drug dealers, um, you know, in the ghetto? It would just be dots everywhere. The building. All them killers that they letting out, they right there in that building. But it's better just because we black, we get along with the killers or something. We get along with the rapists because we black and we from the same hood. What is that? We need protection, too. Finally, I want to ask you about something that someone else asked you in the interview. And I thought the answer was interesting because I think it speaks to you and your generation a lot. Someone said, where do you see Tupac 10 years from now? He said, hey, I just want to be alive. That's real for you. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It, it, this is just so tough to watch. I just want to, you know, go back in time and, you know, pull them aside. You know, some like, you know, Terminator stuff. Go back and, you know, prevent something from happening. I don't even know if I want to listen to this, but I have to. to. You and your generation a lot. Someone said, where do you see Tupac 10 years from now? He said, hey, I just want to be alive. That's real for you. That's so real. I, can't, I, made, I made a metamorphosis. I'm a new person today. Because I used to strongly and honestly, honestly, I feel like I could represent my generation so much because I honestly did not care whether I lived or died. But now, I cannot die with people thinking I'm a rapist or a criminal. I can't leave until this is straight. You know, I'm not suicidal. I'm not, I can't go until y'all really know what time it is. And then after that, boom, it's all over. And we can see, you know, how this can <laughs> fall. But that's how it is. And the reason being is because if I can't live free, if I can't live with the same respect as the next man, I don't want to be here. Because God has cursed me to see what life should be like. If God wanted me to be this person and be happy here, he wouldn't let me feel so oppressed. He wouldn't let me feel so trampled on. You know what I'm saying? He wouldn't let me think the things I think. So. I feel like I'm doing God's work. You know what I'm saying? Just because I don't have nothing to pass around for people to put money in the bucket don't mean I ain't doing God's work. I feel like I'm doing God's work. You know what I'm saying? Because these ghetto kids ain't God's children. 
And I don't see no missionaries coming through there. You know what I'm saying? So I'm doing God's work. While Rev Reverend Jackson do his shit up in the middle class and he go to the White House and have dinner and pray over the president, I'm up in the hood, you know what I'm saying, doing my work with my folks. And just because I don't live there don't mean I don't go there. I got to go there because I can't hang nowhere else. Oh, that, that's how it ends. <sighs> you know, that end part is just so sad. But, you know, what an eloquent guy for, for 23 years old and, and no hesitations, no, you know, um, 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 he just, you know, uh, uh, I, I, I heard him somewhere where he was saying that, you know, um, um, you know, uh, when he gets behind the mic, you know, it just comes through. I, I think he's like that his whole life. It just, you know, comes through. It's not just, you know, rapping. You know, because it certainly looks like something was coming through him there. Um, but, uh, you know, such a smart, influential, young person, um, you know, shot down. And who knows what the real reason was for, if it was for uh, beating Orlando Anderson or, you know, he was, you know, leaving death row. I don't know. But um, regardless, uh, it's a shame um, and a tragedy and... Uh, you you think we would have learned our lesson, but then you know big happened. Um, so I can see why you guys wanted me to react to that. Uh, you know because uh, a I've only been watching lyric videos, so I haven't even seen Pac in action. Uh, so this is really seeing him in action. Um, and also you know I've been having that uh, that question that I'm posing to you guys, like you know how did the guy who wrote you know, um, uh, Dear Mama, how did that guy morph, evolve into um, hit him up? And do you think that if this interview was conducted um, when he got out of prison, do you think he would have had different answers? You know, it's possible. I mean, he'd still be intelligent and eloquent, but would everything that had happened to him in, um, you know, late 94, all of 95, uh, would that have put a different spin on, on his answers? Let me know what you think. Um, well, thanks for hanging out with me. Um, thanks for um, recommending the interview. It was, it was interesting. I hope it's entertaining for you. That was my big concern. Um, uh, so um, think about subscribing and liking, and I'll see you on the next episode. Bye.